The Gobi and the Shrimp by Patricia Zimbeck Irish The Gobi and the Shrimp This is a story of how the Gobi and the Shrimp became best friends. If you venture under the water in the South Pacific, you will find many pairs of Gobi and Shrimp living together. Before there were motors on boats, or even before there were motors, a long time ago, there were gardens of coral reefs in Micronesia. They looked like a garden even though they were part animal and part algae. The algae lived within the coral animal and helped it get food, while the coral animal helped protect the algae. It was a wonderful relationship. Because of this relationship, vast fringing reefs were built along the sides of the islands, which made homes for many beautiful things. It seemed that everything was a rainbow of color. Within this rainbow lived two very small sea creatures. One was an exceptionally talented architect, the shrimp. Because she was so small, she felt that she needed to excel, and excel she did. She made the most elaborate sandcastles that had ever been seen. She only used the finest sand made by the parrotfish. With its large beak-like mouth, it chewed up the coral into the finest white sand that had ever been seen. The shrimp was known all over the reefs for its intricate sand castles. However, because of the time and effort it took to make these detailed castles, it left little time for her to have friends. She often envied other organisms in the reef that had close friends, such as the porcelain crab and the sea anemone. the spine cheek anemone fish, and the lovely green sea anemone. And then, of course, the cleaning stations. These were the special relationships where a small fish or shrimp, such as a cleaning wrasse, neon goby, or banded shrimp, would spend most of the day cleaning off parasites from large fish. The large fish loved it, so they would never think of hurting or eating small fish or shrimp. At the same time that the shrimp was building sandcastles, there lived a small, simple fish called a goby. The goby was very shy, but an astute observer with excellent eyesight. Because he was so shy, he did not have many friends. However, there wasn't anything that went on in the reef that goby didn't know about. One fateful day, the shrimp was building an elaborate sand castle when Frederick the Flounder swam down and landed on the castle. Frederick could not see beneath him because both of his eyes were on the top of his body. Therefore, he didn't see the sand castle or the shrimp. After the accident, Shrimp could not see to build the elaborate sand castles as she did in the past and was feeling very scared. She would try to build a turret, but she was afraid of being eaten while she was working. She also couldn't find the patch of algae which she ate for food. She was about to give up building altogether when the goby who had been watching came over to offer a suggestion. He said that he would watch for any large fish that might eat them if the shrimp could build an underground castle that would be large enough for both of them to stay at night. If the castle was underground, the shrimp would be safe. Gobi would watch the opening in the ground so when shrimp came out to clear sand or to get food from the algae patch, it would be safe. The shrimp thought it was a terrific idea. 
Even to this day, the shrimp and goby are best friends. The shrimp builds tunnels underground and carries the sand out of the hole. When leaving the safe underground, the shrimp always keeps a long antenna on goby like a seeing eye fish, which warns her of danger. If for some reason the shrimp wanders away from the hole and can't find her way back, Gobi finds her and makes contact with her antenna to direct her back to the hole. This friendship has lasted many years and still exists in many places among the coral reefs. Did you know? It is the parrotfish that makes much of the sand in the coral reefs. The parrotfish chew the coral in order to get the algae in the coral. Coral bleaching is when algae called zooxanthellae leaves the coral animal. Without the algae, the coral looks white. Sometimes two shrimp live with one goby and sometimes two gobies live with one shrimp. Lizardfish, sand perch, hammerhead shark pups, goatfish, and jack all have been known to prey on gobies. Gobies and shrimp are active during the day and at sunset they retreat into their burrow and the entrance collapses.